Hello, Paolo Synthmania. This one goes out to Mark OC Driver. At Synthmania, can you show us how you did the octave bass? You're not doing it with your hand. Thanks. And he was referring to the doubled octave bass I did in a previous video. So let's uh, take a look and a listen. All right, let's take a quick look at the Sequential Circuits Pro One, a classic uh, monophonic synthesizer from the early 80s. Excellent for bass, for leads, uh, special effects, all kinds of um, music. But um, the cool thing is it has an onboard sequencer and also a pegator. So in that video, when I was playing those two, four notes, I was uh, just showing that the notes that belong to the bass line, such as this. But of course, uh, they didn't play by hand. In the 80s, they used either an arpeggiator or a sequencer. And actually, this one has a sequence that turns on. As soon as you turn on the Pro 1, it goes chromatically. It's like a test of um, the sequence. So let me turn it on, off and on, and I'll, I'll show you what you get on the Pro 1. You get this sequence here. But of course, you can change these notes, and so that's what we're gonna do now. To play that double octave bass thing, you only need those four notes, and the, the sequencer will do the work for you. So you set it to record, and grab either sequence one or two, it's got two memory slots, sequence one, and play those four notes. That's all you need to do. And um, then uh, when you play the sequence, the sequence says Dara does the work for you, such as this. And the cool thing, this keyboard, like many others of the air, you can um, play the notes in time and will follow the, the pitch. So let me show you how it goes. If you start from the B. For tonight's ditty, I came up with this bass line here. And then we'll connect it to a lindrum. And on the lindrum, we have a typical beats, 80s styles with the classic claps and the cowbell at a BPM of 120. And it goes something like this. So when you sync the link drum to the Pro One, you get this type of beat. And then just to give it a melody, I whipped up a quick patch on the Jupiter 8, which uh, I will alternate between the unison mode and the poly mode. So when I'm using the poly mode, the sound is a little more subdued, a little more behaved, and it also goes through just a quick uh, boss digital delay DD3. My audio interface is out of commission right now, so I'm using a little Mackie mixer and a little Focusrite interface, uh, but I will have to do. And... Um, so this is what you get with the poly mode. And now the things change when you switch to unison mode, you get that typical great uh, melodic lead line from the 80s and also add a little portamento. So let's uh, check it out in the lower octave first and it goes something like this. And 
Yeah, you can hear a little bit of the portamento, but it's really obvious when you move up the keyboard, you get those typical squiggly lines that they had in the 80s, such like this. All right, let's put it all together in a quick ditty for tonight.
All right, I hope this one sheds a little bit more light on how they used uh, the sequencers and arpeggiators in the 80s to do the, um, the famous uh, single octave bass and doubled octave basses and many other variations. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching. Please share, subscribe and like. See you in the next video. Thanks.